What we're going to do now is to look at non-deliverable forwards. In most countries, in Western Europe or America, currencies are deliverable, which means that at the far date we will have a physical exchange of principle of the two currencies. But in some countries, they don't like to do this. They like to keep an eye on the cash balances and control the physical flows of cash. So countries like India, Indonesia, Chile, Colombia, Venezuela, Brazil have non-deliverability. Well, this gives you a problem because if you're trading with one of these countries, how can you lock in the forward exchange rate? And this is where we talk about non-deliverable forwards. Now, when we calculated forward FX rates under conventional currencies, for want of a better word, we calculated it purely by using the interest differential. It was a mathematical number. But when you're dealing with non-deliverable forwards, there are other variables that come into play. For example, liquidity. So it might be political factors, liquidity. There are non-interest rate factors which affect the forward FX rate. Well, to show you how the cash flows actually work, let's take an example on dollar rupee. So imagine you're an American company which is owed a billion rupee, Indian rupee, in a year's time. In an ideal world, you would sell the rupee forward. You would lock in the number of dollars you can receive for the billion rupees. Now let's just say the theoretical forward FX rate is 72. So 72 rupees to the dollar in a year's time. That means that if you sold a billion rupees, divided it by 72, you would get an amount of 13 million $888,000 back. Well, since the currency is not deliverable, what do you do? Well, the bank says, you know that number, the $13.888 million? Remember that number. In a year's time, when you sell your rupees in the market at whatever the spot rate is, if the FX rate is such that you receive fewer than $13,888,000, don't worry, I'll pay you the difference. If you get more than 13.88 million, you pay me the difference. But whatever happens, that evening you're going to go home with 30,888,000 rupees. So you say, okay, let's do it. Well, a year rolls by, and would you believe it, the rupees depreciated. It's gone to 75. So now, when you get your billion rupees, divide that by 75, you're only getting back 30,333,000. You think, oh, great. So hold on. The bank said if I got less than $13,888,000, which is what's happened, they would pay me the difference. So sure enough, the bank does. The bank gives them $555,000 compensation, which, with the $13,888,000 they got from the market, makes the $13,888,000 they were expecting. So this is how an NDF works. It's just a net settlement to or from one of the parties, depending upon whether they received more or less than they were expecting. In real life, they compare the, the spot rate to what they call an NDF fix. This is a fixing rate against which non-deliverable forward contracts are settled for that day. Now, was there a premium up front like an option? No, it was just a forward contract. There was no premium to pay. It was just literally a phone call that says that in a year's time, if the rate is higher or lower than this, I'll pay you the difference. So if you think about it, it's actually a good way, not just to hedge a commercial transaction, but for speculators to take a view on a currency because they're not having to put up any cash up front. And this is one of the reasons why the regulators have been trying to make the market more transparent and to cut down on this because it's a very easy way for a country to have its currency undermined.